I'm just going to cut these two. Back. The tops will be roughly one inch thick. We'll use five quarter tops. So I'll set my eye. Okay, so these tables are going to be 29 by 29 by 29. So I'm using a uh, Idaho pine, prime pine, and these are two by threes. There's some of the frame pieces. So you see they're pretty rough, but this pine actually isn't too bad. This is a pretty good quality pine for you know, for like a Home Depot pine. It's the only lumber I buy at uh, a store like Home Depot. Usually I get all my other lumber from uh, sawmills. As you can see up here, but this stuff I get there because it, it's not it's fairly straight and it's heavier and more dense than the regular blonde pine so so my next step is I cut these rough uh, length of about 28 and a half inches so I'm going to come down to 28 inches right now so the rest of the front pieces are cut down um, and now we're going to cut these down to the final length and um, get, get ready to start uh, milling everything up and then assemble it. Now everything cut to final length. So I know since I used the micro saw stop block, I know sh these all should be just 28 and 1 16th. Make them a little heavy, so I can just double check. Yep, these are all down. Which is the good part about having a good accurate stop block system uh, on your bench, your micro saw station. This is perfect. This will also help uh, prevent any wobbling. Looks good. So I know all these legs are 28 and 1 16th. So now the next step is going to be uh, going to run it through the uh, jo jointer and the planer. Just to get them, because they are, they're not always, always perfect. So there might be a little bow in them. So the faces might not be as flat. So I want this to be as perfect as I can make them. Uh, for what they are, these are rustic farmhouse furniture. This is what this client wanted. Um, and just because it's rustic doesn't mean it, it has to be, excuse me there, it doesn't have, but it can't be perfect. So you want to make sure it's as perfect as possible. Nothing's ever perfect, perfect. But you want to, you don't want to do any shortcuts and you want to make sure everything's kind of flush and straight and saying that you know so my, my process is cut the length mill it up with the jointer and planer sand and then i'll run everything through the uh the router table i'll put a chamfer on each edge and then i'll sand again up to about 120 grit i'll start the first one saying will be 80 grit so that's what we're going to do next so we're going to start milling everything up and it's really just going to be okay so some of the first things i do whenever i use the jointer i put some johnson's paste wax on the bed it's a little dusty uh, I just put a little paste wax on, especially when you're doing the face. So the idea here is I'm going to do one face and then one edge, and then we'll do the other sides on the um, planer. You can also use a table saw too, uh, if you like, but this just makes it a little easier and it keeps it kind of consistent and makes sure everything's you know pretty much uniform. So let's run this through. Face.
the length and milled up uh, through the jointer and planer. So it's not 100% smooth yet, but it's pretty much set to where it's going to be. Uh, I make the frame structure and aprons a little thinner than the legs, so I will have a reveal on them. Just say, uh, and I'll run these all through the um, router table, uh, and I'll put a little chamfer on each edge, exposed edge, and then I will also, I'm going to use pocket screws, pocket holes for this joinery and glue. Alright, so that's, that's the next step. So now I'm going to do a little sanding and then I'll run through the little router table here, put a little chamfer on each edge of the legs and um, the frame pieces. Then we'll do another sanding and we'll start back that up tomorrow. So it's enough for tonight. It's around 9.30. So we got some done today. Not as much as I would like, but other things getting away. So we're going to clean up a little bit. And okay, so it's the next day. Um, I'm out here and everything is pretty much milled up. Uh, for the most part, and I have the pocket holes in all my frame pieces and my legs are milled up. And so now my next step is I'm going to sand. I'm going to use an 80 grit sand and just get all these some of these like imperfections out on the inside of the the, the less revealed side. These are going to be sides that aren't going to be shown. But I also flip them over and do the good side. So uh, just a light sand. Just get any real rough spots out. And then we'll do another sanding after we run these through the router table and put a chamfer. On each edge, um, and then we'll do, go up to 120 grit, and then we'll do another sanding when we get everything together with the glue up and everything uh, before we start painting and finishing. But uh, right now, this is the next step. We're going to start sanding this 80 grit. I'll just go down each one. It's not. It's like a, maybe a 15 minute, 20 minute step here because this is just going to just to get any like this loose wood out, just to clean up a little bit. But the real sanding will happen after. So let's do that now. Now you don't necessarily have to use a router table. You can also use a trim router with a chamfer bit. Um, also a couple little bit bigger routers, but I like to use this. This makes, I think, a little safer um, to me. Um, and it's just, it's just something I've been doing. It just, I have a system, I try to stick with it. So let's take this um, slot cutter off. I put these on when I, uh, I don't need for this featherboard. I don't need this for this application. And I always run a test piece first. 
uh, through first to make sure I like the way it's cutting. All right, so we're set up. We'll set the shop back up one of it. I have some dust collection, and this works pretty good actually. All right, so we're we're ready to start cutting these, but we'll cut a, run a test piece to do first. <laughs> Okay, so everything is seen it now. Um, took about 45 minutes to sand everything, so I'm actually really hot, so I'm sweating. Uh, I've had no air or any air, you know, temperature uh, climate uh, controls out here, so it's just hot. We're cold in the winter. I'd rather be hot though. So everything's seen. It took about, like I said, about 45 minutes or so. So now we're pretty much ready to start the assembly. So the assembly, like I said, is going to be pocket screws uh, and glue. Um, you could use any type on glue. I use type on three for pretty much everything. Uh, but you could use two. Two is actually really good too, especially for something like that. That's not going to be like a water resistant or outside. I mean, if you're using outside furniture, you definitely go to three for cutting boards. And I'll use some pocket screws, uh, either one and a half or two inch. Uh, I like to use two inch, but I one half is usually better for the smaller tables, uh, and that's kind of where I set the um, this um, drill at, drill bit. So that's all ready to go. So we are going to get ready to assemble these. So that's the next step. So I'm just going to pull some uh, all the stuff out my squares. Uh, use at least one square. I like to use at least one of these measuring squares for the bottom brackets. I also have some. Uh, <coughs> spacer jigs I'll use for the bottom and um, clamps obviously and that's about it so we're going to write all right so now I'm going to start assembling this so I put my legs I'm going to do the shorter stretcher to start this will be my top because it has no chamfer and then it's the bottom of the top stretcher and apron I'm just going to line it up I also use these little blocks here as my little spacers to give me my reveal. Alright. So keep these square and straight as possible. a little bit to start. You don't want to over tighten and over screw these in either. Alright, let's make sure top. And if you look down here, see I have a little feel. Let's tighten these up. So far, screw is square. Perfect. This is probably the quickest, and honestly, it's probably the strongest joint. 
I do, uh, and I'll just show, I do have Dale jigs I use at times, and I use Dales, I have plenty of them, but also use biscuits and a domino joiner. I do that too, but honestly, this joint is probably just strong, or not stronger, with some glue. The problem with this joint is sometimes if you over tighten it, it could be, it come out a little lopsided, a little wobble, so you have to really make sure that, uh, that you're nice and not too, too tight when you screw them in, and then tighten them up after you get them kind of built. All right, so there's the top. Wipe off any excess glue. Flip it around. Lay this here. This will be the bottom. And the glue is what really makes the joint strong. But if you put it on wrong, you can also grab this little hammer here. And I use these little spacers for these bigger tables. Okay, all four frames, uh, side stretchers are built, so now we're going to assemble them to the fronts and backs. Okay, so this will be the front of the table and there'll be bottom shelves here and obviously a top. So the bottom shelves, I'm gonna put these little wooden cleats on the side here, so I'm gonna get a rough measurement. About 23 to 24 inches, 23 and a half would probably be fine. All right, so the 23 and a half heavy. So we'll get some little pieces of one by and we'll strip that down, see if I have any scrap pieces and we'll just brad nail them in. All right, that's the next step. So these pieces, I'm going to use a bunch of scrap pieces for this.
nicer. Here I'm just going to prepare to put the upside down V's in. So I'm just getting the center point on the side of these tables and we'll get a rough measurement. Then we'll sneak up on these with uh, usually about 22 degree angle cuts with uh, two by three pine. these two by threes down in half so they're gonna be like one by ones by the time we're done and these will be the upside down piece which I just measured for um, look at the angle for these these are a little bigger tables than I normally make usually they're 22 degree 22 and a half degree angle and they're usually about 17 inches in length but these are gonna be about 22 inches in length 21 maybe and the angle is probably gonna be a little more probably gonna be like a 30 degree or so angle we'll figure that out uh, in the next step, but we'll start cutting them and we'll just try to get one exact piece and then we'll use that as a template. That's how I know I'm going to do this. Try to make it not too difficult and too much math. We're going to go over about a third. We're going to try a 33 degree angle to start. I don't want it to be bought up to the line. I want to be have a little space so I can broaden out these in and use glue so I don't want it to be bought up against each other. But I want a little space, maybe like an inch space between each piece. Alright, so we're going to try about 33 degree angle here. If you can see that. Thirty-three and a quarter might be good. Three was too much. We're gonna try thirty. We'll try we're gonna try to sneak up on this. go down a little bit more maybe to 27 or so but we'll try that and see what that looks cut just a little heavy this will be our template piece we use yeah I mean it's it's pretty perfect but I kind of want to have a little more space in between so I'm gonna see if I can cut it a little lighter So now we'll put the V's in. Right there, second. Okay, we're just gonna use some glue and brad nails on these. These really aren't structural. Alright. Just make sure the inside's flush.
Tiny bit of water in. This is a paint and primer, so I don't have to typically primer this ahead of time. But I have done that on bigger uh, jobs. But these tables are going to be fine, especially with the rustic farmhouse look. Okay, so now I'm going to start cutting the top. This is going to be just five quarter pine. I'm going to cut it around 29 and a quarter. Just a little extra space for final mill up. It's got a little heavy. I'll set the stop block. Okay, so next I'm going to cut these down to final width of about 10 inch, inches each, a little light, so it'll roughly be about 29 when it's all said and done, um, three boards laminated, so they'll be 10 light. So let's set this up. So it's pretty hot today, so I have to kind of be quick with this. This drying time is going to be pretty quick. So I can't waste too much time. Let's put a little bit here.
So we get a nice even glue up. Everything's nice and level. Alright. clamps. I don't think I need any calls with these. They are pretty level, which is nice. Okay. Alright. And this will dry really fast, so I had to be kind of quick here. Okay, so I forgot or deleted by accident a couple of the videos, uh, clips for this. So you can see on this, uh, these aprons, you see the little biscuit slots for these tabletop fasteners. I lost that, that video coverage of that footage and also staining the tops and bottom pieces. I just use a special walnut stain and just uh, stain them uh, with two coats and just wiped off the excess with a dry cloth. It's pretty much basic and which is a uh, varathane special walnut stain so yeah I, f I forgot lost the, those two videos so I'm just going to mount the tabletops and bottoms next so you can see here I'm using these little z-clips I'm going to use and just a center uh, drill bit self-centering drill bit to pre-drill and then just use some uh, tapping screws three-quarter inch tapping screws just to mount I don't over tighten because you want uh, for layout for wood movement. All right, so I just space these out and uh, brad nailed them down. And the top, we just use the tabletop fasteners and just see here. I just screw them in. They're using a self-centered drill bit, and these are pretty much done. Just got to put some finish on them. 